sexual assault or abuse is any form of sexual activity that one does not consent to, and this includes inappropriate touching or unsolicited sexual intercourse, sexual intercourse that one says no to. In the world we live in today, rape and abuse, especially in children, have become the new order. Each passing day, Nigeria records one or two reported and announced rape cases embarrassingly carried out by either a friend, a close relative, or a neighbor. Sexual predator is a term used to describe the most dangerous sex offenders, and little or no effort has been put in place to reduce the risk they pose to society. Today on the Amazons, we are discussing increase in rape and sexual abuse. How to spot a predator? My name is Aisha Falode. Well, I welcome to the program. Lilian Imoni. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Amazons welcome as usual, Amazons. Lilian. It's good to see you again. It's good to have you on the program. Increase in sexual abuse and sexual assault in Nigeria. How to spot a predator? Hmm. How do you spot a predator? Who is even a predator? Like I rightly said or in talked about, most of these acts are carried out by either a close relative, a friend, or a neighbor, very, very unsuspecting. You wouldn't even think or imagine that such people would be the ones who would commit such crimes? Well, um, sexual assault, sexual violence, unsolicited sex, yes. unconsented sex, mm. it happens everywhere. True. The increase in Nigeria is very alarming. It's alarming. Like you said, uncles sleeping with their nieces, mm -hmm. even fathers True. committing sexual assault against their own children underage children are being abused by neighbors. You see, it is, it is very likely that men, is a known fact, are known to commit sexual assault mm. and sexual crimes of any kind mm. against young girls, against girls, against any person mm. in a society where laws have not been put in place, mm. stringent laws mm. to punish the offender. Where there are no laws mm. to protect victims, where there are no laws mm. to guard against the act, men are definitely more likely to commit sexual assault, sexual violence, sexual behavior of any kind mm. that is punishable under the law. So this means that sexual assault is not only limited to men, mm. women too. True. Girls too, you have house helps, yes. house girls who take advantage, who of, take advantage yes, of the, the world they're supposed yes. to look after to True. perform all kinds of mm. you know, funny things against the little children. You see, as long as you have strangers invading the space, the, the safe space of children mm. and women, sexual assault is likely to happen. Mm. More so when those who commit these offenses mm know that they can get away with it. Hey, that's, that's, I think that's really, really the bottom of this issue. You know, when the offenders go scot-free, they are released on bail. This makes the, you know, the societies, you know, they'll just be like, oh, this guy has done it and he goes. Nothing is going to happen to him. He will just be arrested for one or two days. The police would release him. Nothing is going to happen, you know. And it keeps increasing and increasing. Like you rightly said, when there are no laws, abuse is inevitable. That's right. These things will keep happening and happening. And when there are no reported cases, we do not see the offenders. You know, they should have go through the process of even having mock shots, registered offenders. Maybe that will serve. Yes, that would yes, that will serve as a deterrent to offenders or intending offenders. Well, that is not to say that because there are no laws, it now falls on us mm. as parents, True. as individuals, to begin to take our own precaution True. on how to spot predator. a likely predator, a likely sex offender, and also how to teach our children, children exactly. on how to protect themselves and be safe from these people. This is the Amazons. When we come back, we'll be talking to the experts who will expand the discussion and give us tips on what to do when you spot a predator or when you have the urge or the feeling that this is a predator and you need to protect yourself or the children from sexual violence, sexual assault, or sexual crime of any kind after the break.
like every other crime in Nigeria, one major factor is enforcement, in addition to the fear of the victims coming out to lay their complaints. First step is to take a good history. You want to know where it happened, how it happened, exactly what happened. Welcome back, and if you are just joining us, it's the Amazons. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation by staying connected on our social media handles. On Instagram, it's the Amazons Official NG. On YouTube, it's the Amazons NG. And on Twitter, it's the Amazons NG. Today, we are discussing the increase in rape and sexual abuse, how to spot a predator. Our guests have joined us today, and we have Dr. Ad Adjoke. She is a public health physician, right? Am I correct? Yes, you are. And we have Yvonne. She is a lawyer. You're both welcome to the show today. Thank, Thank you. you. So back to you. <laughs> well, let me just start with you straight because, you know, from a legal background, you are a lawyer. Uh, we want to know why there's such an increase and widespread, you know, increase now in cases of sexual abuse, in cases of sexual violence, in cases of sexual assault? Why is there an increase and a widespread of it? Okay, um, like every other crime in Nigeria, one major factor is enforcement, in addition to the fear of the victims coming out to lay their complaints. Mm -hmm. so, as regards enforcement, it's not as if we don't have laws in Nigeria that speak against rape, that tackle everything that has to do with rape, sexual assault, sexual harassment. In fact, we have four laws, if I can remember. We have the criminal code, the penal code. We have a law for legal states, and then we have the recently promulgated VAP Act. Mm -hmm. That's the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And that one even, it even recommends that men can be raped. Under the criminal code, men can be raped mm -hmm. in Nigeria law. But under VAP, you can report as a man that you have been raped. It's not as if we don't have the legal framework, but the issue importantly is enforcement. Mm. There's, no, there's not enough enforcement, just like some other crimes in Nigeria where there are not enough enforcement. You go to a police station to report and um, in some very funny circumstances, the policeman is asking you, oh, what did you wear? Mm -hmm. Why were you raped? Exactly. Some very <laughs> stupid questions, Why were you really. Raped? Why were you, see the way you are dressed. What do you think happened? And um, there are a lot of factors. Mm. Enforcement is the first one. The second one is the fact that even the policemen that you're supposed to report to, so they are not properly trained. Mm -hmm. They don't have the capacity to handle such situations. And the third one is the fact that the victims mm. fear stigma and um, discrimination. So they are very reluctant to lay their complaints. So, so that, that puts them, um, you know, a, a, a clearer perspective to it. So there are laws yes, to actually laws. protect vic victims, but yes, the enforcement, to a large extent. yeah, yes. to a large extent, yes. you know, enforcement has deprived even the victim mm. the the comfort of coming forth mm. to report that this is what has happened to me. Exactly. So, so for for the doctor, really, how do you how do you conclude mm. that someone has been raped? Mm. You know, when they when they come to you, how do you, uh, with such uh, allegation or with such complaint that look, this is what has happened to me? How do you verify? Okay, so ideally, when a patient comes to you, which is in most cases a woman, she comes to you maybe emotionally distraught. So the first step is to take a good history. You want to know where it happened, how it happened, exactly what happened. Was there intercourse through which orifice was the intercourse? Did the intercourse happen? How long it lasted? What happened? After? So you want to take a very thorough history mm. from the woman. And you know, it can be emotionally distressing, very, very, yeah. but it is necessary. Then ideally, in ideal circumstances, you should have your rape kit. So you take your history, then you do an examination. You examine a body. And it involves a general examination, an examination of the reproductive health organs, which is for the woman is the vagina. You also check the other orifices, like we mentioned, the anus, mm -hmm. the mouth, every other part of the body that has been involved. Once you're done with that, you should have a rape kit. A rape kit is like a sexual forensic kit where all the items that you need to take evidence, you know, after you've taken your history, you want to confirm, you want to have them um, do investigations, laboratory investigations to make sure that what has been said corre you know, correlates with what you're seeing to make that diagnosis. So in the rape kit, you take your swabs, you take swabs from all the orifices. That's why we tell women that have been raped that when you are raped, the first thing, your first instinct 
it's usually to wash up. Mm. To brand, you know, if you want to peel your skin yes, off. Yes. But no, don't do that. Don't wash off. Just come to the hospital. That way we can get um, scrapings under the nails. That's what the rape kit has. It has a lot of instruments and swabs for that. So we take your nail, the scrapings under the nails, you know, in the process of scratching and the rest. We can get a lot of forensic evidence. We take all the cement samples, the bed sheet if she comes with some items of clothing. So we, we need to take those samples and then we send them for investigations and then oftentimes definitely if you came in unwashed we'll find the cement sample of the perpetrator it's when we have evidence like this that we can indeed say that we can indeed go into the courts and you know assuming there was a very good legal system we can for sure win our case of rape so once we've collected our evidence as such the next thing to do is to give her mental support she needs psychological support she needs testing not some of them immediate, some not immediate. I mean, in terms of STDs, mm -hmm. in terms of HIV, HIV is an STD. So she needs testing, she needs pain relief. Mm -hmm. If she has been mutilated down there, she may need some repairs. Mm -hmm. So, but a long term thing that I know is very, very necessary for them is the mental and psychological support because a lot of them come down short term and long term with mental mental disorders like anxiety, mm. post-traumatic stress disorder, um, um, suicidal ideations. Mm. They don't think it's, life is worth. Some replay that and it can even lead to psychosis. True. Yes. Okay, so like um, from all that you've said now, is that the proper order? For me, I feel like a woman who has come to you, you know, who has put herself together, because that's the first step, she puts herself together, she finally decides that she wants to make a report and she comes to you. The first things first, should it be the investigation and all of that, the forensics, the rape kit, and, and because in that process she might change her mind and say, look, I don't want to go through this process again. It's already you know, a very, very traumatic experience for me, what I've gone through, and then I come to you. So in that order that you've just talked, I, I wish that the order would be that. The first thing should be the mental support, show empathy, ask questions, do you want to go through with this? Should we proceed before, you know, instead of going through? And then when she's done with you, she goes to the police station. Another form of interrogation, just like what um, she even said, that most of these police officers have not been trained on how to handle such cases. So they don't even show empathy. They just go through the investigation straight. Oh, were you dressed provocatively? What time of the night did this happen? So in that order, what do you think? Don't you think that one should, the other should come first, that the mental support, the showing of empathy, asking questions, if you want to go through this before you start the forensics Six and all, and yes, that. yes, and all of I that. I completely agree with you, and that is why, maybe I omitted to mention, mm -hmm. doctors are trained, and in some cases, they call it um, trauma training of nurses. So in some centers, some well-structured um, centers, you have nurses that have been trained in handling rape victims. Mm. So they are doing their job, mm. but in the they are, they are doing it with empathy, with support, with emotional guidance. You can call it some kind of mental support. Mm. Though the mental support I was referring to earlier is, I mean, a psychologist, because it goes beyond that peripheral. So they are trained. So as you are sitting her down, and that applies to every patient, but more especially for rape patients, you just don't, I, don't, I can't see a patient and start saying, in fact, for medical exams, you're supposed to create, create a rapport. That's the basis That's of every medical examination, mm. not to talk of rape victims. Mm. So before you take your history, you have to make sure she's comfortable. Does she need a blanket? Is she okay? Does she want something to drink? Does she want to see someone? Can you call her mother? Mm. But still in that same emergency setting, you have to be careful to collect your evidence. Quickly, quickly, because it can rub off. Okay. I mean, definitely she decides she wants to take her bath in the middle of everything, and then you lose that evidence. Or all these things you're saying, it's true, because she may go home and then decide she doesn't want to, her parents yes, tell her. Again. And you lose bearing of your statistics, of your evidence. So, but you're definitely right. She's a person, and first she, of all. the first thing to do is support her. And that's why we are trained, ideally specially trained to handle rape victims. Okay, we, we, we'll just go on a quick break now because when we come back that we are going to still pursue answers to those questions further because in, 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 in medicine, in the hospitals, you told us there are nurses who are specially trained. So why don't we have policemen who are also specially trained to handle rape cases? We are discussing on the Amazons today. 
the increase in sexual abuse, sexual assault, and how to spot a predator. How do you spot a predator in a family setting? That will be discussed after the break. People that have been put in charge of children should always have a keen eye towards what they are doing. Most of these persons are not first-time offenders. Mm. In the community, they're always someone that continues Repeated. doing it. Welcome back to the Amazons, where today we are discussing increase in sexual assault and abuse. How to spot a predator. Our guests are still with us. Von Adewumi, Esquire, and <laughs> Dr. Ajoke Adewole. I, I, I want to ask you, Von, because we, we also still need to go back to law. You see, in a, in a community and in a society where records are not kept, there's likelihood, very high likelihood, that cases like this will continue to thrive and flourish. Mm -hmm. People, will, the predators will find the easy way out. Mm -hmm. So, do we have records of predators in communities? Is there, is there a place that, you know, is there somewhere that you can go to and say, mm -hmm. in this community is very prevalent mm -hmm. because you have these records to mm -hmm. back, you know, these statistics to back up your, your suspicion? Okay, so on the issue of rape and sexual assault in Nigeria, most of the statistics have been based on surveys, mm. taking a survey of women in a particular area, in particular states. But there are some legal actions, like legal frameworks to back it. For example, in the Lagos states, although we all know that Lagos is well ahead of several other states when it That's comes right. to legal laws. So there's a sexual offenders register in Lagos states where you can look through and see the names of persons. Because most of these persons are not first-time offenders. Mm. In the communities, they're always someone that continues Repeated. doing it because mm. you've been caught the first time, you are let off the oak, and then you keep on doing it. So there are, there's a list of persons that have committed sexual assaults in the community. And I think it is state so also has a list like that, but not every state. And that is the issue with Nigeria. There are several laws, but most of the states don't even adopt the laws. Mm. Like the VAPLA I was talking about, it's, that's even comments, it recommends, it um, talks about things like anal rape, mm. even or if it, through the mouth, oral rape, it is under that law. But it has just been adopted by Abuja, Benue, and Kaduna. And all the other states are lagging behind. Even the Child Dress Act, even the 11 other states have not adopted it. So there are several laws, but they are not being adopted by the states. If you can have the sexual offenders register in all the states, it's easy to look up the information and see persons that have been arrested on this same charge and allow your children to stay away from them. Name and shame them. Mm. Put the list up. Oh, these are the persons on the list. Stay away from them. They should not be able to climb. The, if they are pastors, they should not be able to climb the altar to preach. They should Name not, and shame. Exactly. Mm. The, the Ekiti State released some of the persons on their list. And then I saw a man, 59-year-old, a venerable, mm. and things like that. So, But now you can see his face. He's True. out there. So if this offender's list is in mm -hmm. every state. There will be a record that Nigerians can point to, mm -hmm. and that you don't want your name to be on the list, mm -hmm. so you refrain from such acts. So aside from aside from a register, can you also put faces to these names, and then there's a public uh, uh, um, a public court now Definitely. where you can go and view them. Exactly. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that when you begin to make or like mask them, them. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, yes, exactly. then it's all yeah. important. Maybe you should go for mock, mock shots exactly. when they're arrested. So mm -hmm. when you have your mock shots, you know that oh, yeah, there some, there and yes. everybody can see. And you. of course, you know those kind of things in Sena climbs when you have mock shots you are disadvantaged. You are. you are in the workplace and everywhere. So if same things can be adopted here in Nigeria, I think we'll go a long way. <laughs> Let's talk about how to spot a predator. How do we teach our children what to say, the signs? What do they see in this man that would ring an alarm that he's touching me inappropriately? How do the children even know that they are being touched inappropriately? Can we please talk about this? Okay, first, first thing is, you should always be very careful about people in charge of children. You have babysitters, you have drivers of school buses, people that have been put in charge of children, you should always have a keen eye towards what they are doing. Then, 
another thing, another way you can spot predators are people that have so much interest in children. They buy gifts, so they try to win your trust. They go to serious like learn to win not just your trust, but the children's trust. So you trust them. Say, go and stay with Uncle Lagbaja. Go and stay with this. He buys gifts when he's coming home, and you know he's a good person in the community, well respected. You should always just look. It's it's good to be cautious when before you accuse someone, though. Mm. But and also as a parent, you have to be available and visible. Let them know that you are around. You are always asking mm -hmm. questions. I ask my children. I tell them, did anybody touch your bum bum today? Say no, mommy. Nobody. If somebody touches, what do you do? I tell my teacher and I tell you. True. So you have to health education. True. Tell your children. They will be able to tell you. In fact, my son told me. So, so, so person was looking at my bum, but I told her to go away. Good. So you tell your children, that's a six-year-old. So you tell your children, this is your vagina, this is your penis. You speak normal languages true. to them. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't Say it as it's it is. It's part of the body, just like eyes, your true, nose, your true, mouth, your true. hands. So you let them know, you let them get comfortable with their body. We're talking to you. So predators, it can be difficult because they look very good. There are people in the society that are spotless. Very unassuming. And they are in charge. So they always want opportunities to be alone with the child. Mm. They want, these are just stereotypes anyways. You may find one or two deviations. Mm. But they want opportunities. So they want to win your trust so that you leave your children with them. And um, so basically that's it, by and large. Okay, so, so, so for, for, I, I still come back to the law again. The law. <laughs> you know, since, since these laws are available, you know, it may just be a case of people unaware. You see, the, the reason I'm saying this is, you see, where these cases are prevalent, really, yeah. are those communities, yeah. those highly dense areas. Yeah. So how do you tell that woman? Does that woman know that there's really, a you know, a that law protects that protects her, her that protects her child, child if this happens to her? Mm -hmm. How do we take this message to them in their own domain, in their own community, in their own space, in their own language, so that, you know, they know that this, is, this, is, this help is available to them, it can protect them, it can prevent them? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this is always this is boils down to an issue of advocacy, and now we need to understand that it's not just um, the jobs of the NGOs, the lawyers, the police, or the government. It's a job for every single person because. Statistically speaking, about one in every four women has been assaulted, has been abused, has been harassed, has endured one form of sexual assault or the other. So it needs to be something for everybody. And we need to go to those areas because they do not know. It's not, some of them just feel like, if I should go to the police, they'll push me away. They do not know that they have other steps. There are other methods they can go about it. That one way is not the end. When you go to a police station, they turn you back. When they say something that you do not like, that's not the end of the road. You can, these are the airplanes. These are the persons you can talk to. These are the organization, organizations you can speak with. So there needs to be more advocacy, more awareness. It can never be enough. Mm. It can never it be can never enough. Be too much. It can never be too much. Yes. So we need to, Continue speaking about it. We need to continue advocating awareness. Go to all these small communities, all the rural communities that they are like a family. So they feel like let's keep this within our family. Sure. Let's keep this within our community. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody is interrelated. Everybody is interconnected. Let them understand the fact that it's not about this offender. You are destroying this child's life. You are destroying this person's life. You need to be able to take your power back. Because when a person is sexually harassed, when a person is assaulted, person's power in a way, person's voice has been taken. And when you report the offender, you take your power back. You put yourself back in that power position power. So let them understand the fact that you need to speak out and there needs to be more awareness. And that's the first step to healing as well. Exactly. When you speak out about it, most of the odds that rape victims go through is because they do not they do not they don't know who to speak with, they don't know who to talk to. They just bottle everything up and it can be very hurting. So when you speak to somebody about it, let, let those in the rural communities understand that they need to speak out about it. They need to report several cases that are going on mm. in their community. Even I'm still coming to you again. <laughs> I, I like what you said about this advocacy not limited to groups, to NGOs, to law, to media houses. It's for all of us. I, and I think the best place that the advocacy voice can be loudest is in our religious houses. Mm. You are correct. In our religious places. Mm -hmm. People go there. It's a sacred place. And when you now find things like this happen, and you take it to pastor, mm. you take it to imam, mm. and they now said, you see, um, we have to leave everything to, to God. God. Only God knows judge. who is, only He's God can judge. You see, those kind of statements mm. and reactions, are, are, they, are, they are just, they are just uh, for a better word to use, they are very annoying. Mm. 
So how do we get these people to also begin to say, to also begin to see that they are not only responsible for the spiritual aspect mm. of the human being. Yes. They are also responsible mm. for how that human being mm. turns out to embrace mm. the spiritual aspect that they are teaching or they are, they, that the religious houses are all about. I, I agree with you to a large extent. I agree with you. The fact that religious bodies are a major focus in this campaign against sexual assault because ordinarily most persons would not even go to the police first. They will not go to the lawyer first. True. They will call up their pastor first. Oh, Very pastor, true. this is what happened. So pastors, pastors, religious organizations, imams in the mosque, everybody, they need, they need to understand the fact that they are like the figures, they are, they are the figures of um, in the in the institutions, they are the figures that you can run to. They need to understand how important their stand is. It's very, should I say, it's very annoying for a lack of a better word, like you said, that the fact that some religious institutions we try to cover up the issue, mm. try to cover up cases of rape that are happening in the church, mm. cases of sexual assault, cases of harassment. Mm. It's high time that religious bodies stop, I stop hiding behind the name of God to mm. say, let God set to it, let God do this. There is a framework, there is a legal system to set to it. They should guide their members the right way. So members know what to do. I wish and hope that we could have continued this conversation, <laughs> yes. but it's ongoing on our social media social handle. Media handle. Uh, you yes. know. So it's, um, it's an ongoing conversation, really. Mothers, you have, you have a big job to do. Yeah, do not true. shut your children up when they tell you this has happened, especially when there are family members that are involved. I know of mothers who have actually sent their daughters out of the house. You want to break my marriage. Mm -hmm. How dare you accuse my husband of... You see, you have just destroyed the future of that girl. Mm -hmm. You see, that girl can never can never recover from the fact that she's been assaulted, abused, and on top of that, her mother did not give her the protection that she needs. So she's vulnerable outside. True. That is the end of that. Unless, let me, look, religion, unless God intervenes mm. and rescue that child. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Dr. Adewale Ajoke, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to Amazon. Yvonne Adewumi Esquire. Legal luminary. Yes. Thank you, thank you very, very much for, for coming on the show today. And Lillian, we have to say goodbye to yes, our Yes, we have to say goodbye like we always do here. We hope that we know we've been able to answer your questions, enlighten you, inform you, educate you, you know, with the guests who have shared their wealth of experience and knowledge on what to do, how to spot a pre as well. Until next week, my name is Liliani Money. Until we see you again next time. Bye bye.